Today I'm joined by uh, Elliot Block from Arm & Hammer Animal Nutrition, and we're talking about uh, boosting milk fat. Elliot, tell me a little bit about uh, why this is a timely topic for 2011. Well, Walt, it's kind of timely because two issues. One is that we've been coming through a period of time of generally low milk fat tests uh, across the country. And uh, on top of that, milk fat prices right now are pretty good. So making sure that you're getting optimal milk fat is uh, going to be profitable. So what are some of the suggestions that you have for boosting milk fat? Well, there are generally 10 things that I, te I tend to zone in on, um, really related back to the rumen and rumen function, but there are certain areas that you can pinpoint and see if there are problems there. Uh, those, you know, would certainly the first one being uh, rumen buffering. What we have to understand is that as the rumen decreases in pH or increases in acidity, and this happens throughout the day in short cycles, you can get milk fat decreases. I wouldn't call it full-blown decreases. They're happening because of this variation. Some things that relate back to that are things like delivering adequate fiber to the ration. Fiber is uh, stimulates salivation and is a natural buffer for the rumen. Uh, this is on top of any rumen buffers that you're actually adding to the diet. Uh, the other... The feed bunk management is also critical because if if we have the right dry matter in fluctuations and in intake, you're not going to get the big changes in rumen pH that can lead to uh, milk fat depressions. Uh, another point that I look into is how much unsaturated fatty acids there are in the diet in a free and available form because these fatty acids tend to be toxic to the rumen, uh, to the rumen bugs, and the rumen microbes try to hydrogenate them or make them. If you have too much of these, it can lead to uh, some intermediates that are produced by the bugs that cause milk fat depression. Getting back to rumen pH, you should be looking at your starch levels, not just having too much starch in the diet, but having starch that's very fermentable can certainly lead to more acid production and produce volatile fatty acids that that can say uh, a milk fat depression. Some people do not consider protein and protein quality when they're looking at milk fat depression. I do, mainly because since we've been working with amino acid delivery systems and looking at balancing rations for amino acids, We've seen almost as many milk fat responses positively as we have milk protein responses. Uh, and mainly that's because the biological system that allows the mammary gland to produce milk fat. And don't forget that half of the milk fat, more or less, is produced right in the mammary gland, uh, with the other half coming, coming directly from the blood. Mineral levels... Um, there are certain minerals that are that tend to be counterproductive to milk fat. One of them is chloride. Dietary chlorides, we're doing some investigative work now to look further into that. <clears throat> but doing your forages by wet chemistry, not by near infrared, is almost an essential to determine if these minerals have any influence on, on your milk fat. We've been working more and more with uh, the concept of DCAD and potassium in particular, uh, but levels of potassium and levels of potassium higher than what National Research Council would have recommended uh, seem to be very positively correlated with, uh, with improving milk fat and maintaining those fat levels. When you're feeding additives, whether they're, you know, DCAD supplements or mineral buffers, uh, I think that what you have to do is make sure that these are being fed at manufacturer's rates. The manufacturer's rates, the recommended feeding rates are there for a reason. They've usually been tested, um, and I think it's critical that you take a look at those. Uh, the tenth one is monitoring. 
And this isn't related to milk fat as much as deciding whether or not you're getting a change. Uh, I think it's critical. It's one of the biggest challenges on some farms is actually monitoring before and after situations, making sure that you're numbered, you're, you're taking accurate measurements. Uh, and when you do, your milk fat goes up, you almost invariably have a greater income of the feed cost, uh, which is actually the bottom line. So, Walt, those are the 10 items that I tend to look at when we're looking at milk fat problems on the farm. Oh, is there anything that you see frequently? In other words, more uh, often than not, you could go to number six or number seven and say, yeah, uh, uh, might be having a difficulty with, with that aspect of, of milk fat depression. Well, I think that you know, there are two issues that, that really pop up that have been popping up in the last eight to ten months. One is this unsaturated fat level. With all of the byproduct corn uh, corn byproducts that we're feeding, the distillers, the hominies, these tend to be not just higher in fat than they usually used to, but the type of fat that's there is this free fatty acid, so they're very reactive in the rumen, uh, and the levels can be very variable. I mean, I've seen distillers' grains with as low as 6 or 7% fat, uh, and some of them with 12, 15, or 18 percent fat. And they can vary from plant to plant, and they can vary within a plant, within a, a, an ethanol distillery. Fluctuate all over the board, and the more, by, more of those byproducts that you add, the more your risk of hitting that level of unsaturated fat in the room and that's a little bit too high. And that's been one area. The other area that people uh, are finding much success with right now is this potassium and decad issue. We've been having fairly good success uh, at getting milk fat tests to boost. I think most people have monitored their starch and their women buffers. Um, I think that those two areas, plus the management area, feed bunk management, are probably the three most uh, frequent that I see that, that lead to some problems. Great. Appreciate your time today, Elliot. And uh, we have some additional resources that are available online uh, provided by Elliot uh, to help producers who uh, may be struggling with this or want to look into milk fat depression and uh, overcoming it more. Okay, you're welcome.